Welcome back and welcome to section three, data retrieval fundamentals, queries, scans, and indexes. Welcome to video one, retrieving data by key queries. The data model is everything. Now remember back in section one, we talked about how NodeSQL databases trade query flexibility against performance, scalability, and high availability. Understanding these limitations combined with your application's use case is absolutely critical to designing an effective data schema. Failure to do so can result in really high usage costs and poor performance. Now, I've been working as an AWS, AWS architect for some time, and this is the number one mistake that people make when using DynamoDB. Because Amazon talk about it like it's a general purpose database, developers in particular think it can be used in the same way as a SQL database, something that they're used to. And in fact, I was sitting down the other day with a developer and he said to me, James, DynamoDB is rubbish. It's really slow. I don't understand why you're suggesting we use it. And I said to him, what are you trying to do with it? Let's have a look at the table you've created. And he created a table, a list of users in it, very similar to our, our use case. He'd keep the uh, user table on email address, just like we have. Uh, but what he was trying to do was find out a list of all the users in a particular department and department was one of the attributes in his table but it wasn't his partition key and it wasn't his sort key so he was in the console and he was scanning the DynamoDB table for all the users in a given department and it was taking ages to run and his table was getting throttled and he was running out of read units and he was saying James this is rubbish why are we using this and I said to him you're using it in the wrong way so let's look at the DynamoDB data model once again, because this is really, really important. We have tables. Tables are collections of data. Inside tables, we have individual entries. These are like rows. And inside items, we have attributes. And these are the properties associated with the entries. And storing data is just like JSON. So just like what we've been seeing in the previous video. If we had a movie table, we can have two JSON documents they can be a completely different shape, have completely different attributes. All that matters that's consistent is whatever our primary key is. That could be title, it could be movie ID, it could be anything. But that's the only field that has to be there. So I want you to think about DynamoDB as a persistent map. When you're programming things for DynamoDB, when you're designing use cases for DynamoDB, imagine that it's a map or a dictionary, and the only thing it's doing for you is storing it persistently. So while a map or a dictionary is held in memory, this is obviously stored persistently and durably across three availability zones, six copies, blah, 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 but it's a map. Please think about it as a persistent map. Now, as we know, maps are just key value stores. That is a data structure where each element contains a unique key coupled with an object, the value. And they're designed to offer consistent or order one performance when retrieving data based on the key because the key is usually hashed or indexed and this is exactly what DynamoDB does. If you want to retrieve data based on something in the value part of a map you need to iterate through all the possible keys and values until you find what you're looking for. So that means query time grows with the number of objects in the map exactly like the developer I was talking about. This was the issue he had. As his table grew his scan query was taking longer and longer and he thought DynamoDB was rubbish. And DynamoDB works in this way because that's what it's designed to do. It's designed so you do a lookup on the key, not a scan for the value. That scan feature is really just there for debugging and for very, you know, very infrequent operations. So in our user table data model, we've got two keys. We've got a partition key and we've got a sort key. So that means we can have multiple entries for Joe Blogs 1234 for each of his logins if we wanted to. So we can retrieve all entries for Joe Blogs sorted by login time, for example. The course info data model, however, only has one key, just the partition key, and that's the course ID. So we're only ever going to look up on this course ID. Now, so far, we've only accessed data based on partition key. And like I said, this is just like reading data based on a key in a map. DynamoDB refers to this operation as a query, which is a little bit cheeky because really it's just a get by key operation. DynamoDB also gives you the option to create tables with composite keys, and we've done that as well with a partition key and a sort key. And in our data model, this would allow for multiple entries for a single user ID. 
So as long as each user ID has a different last login time, we can have multiple entries in the user table. So if we want to take this further, this means our query operation can return multiple results. So we can also supply a filter expression along with our query. So this gets executed after a query has run, but before the results are returned. Another option is to use a range expression, which can be applied to a table sort key. So we can say, get me all user logins between this time and this time. If you only use queries in your application, you can expect average response time in the region of 10 milliseconds up to 20 million requests per second. So think about that for a moment. You can run 20 million queries per second and all of them will come back in under 10 milliseconds. That is quite an engineering achievement.